Welcome everybody, Jerry with 3DHP, and in today's video we're going to talk about the Jumitsu 4040 Pro CNC from Same Smart right after this. Hey, welcome back. Yeah, I've been busy the last few weeks. I've been working on all kinds of projects. I rearranged my shop. I moved my little CNC from over there next to the big rack you might have seen in some of the videos where you're going to see in these clips. I've moved it over here. I've got a dust extractor that I bought from Harbor Freight, which is working awesome. I'm not sure if I'm going to end up mounting it on a wall, putting a different filter on it, putting on this big cyclone on it. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do here yet with that. But it's working amazing. I'm going to show you some footage here of a few things I had, some problems that I had, and then we'll come back at near the end of the video and we'll talk about what I did make and what I'm going to make. So here, check out some of this footage and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, the sign got all done. It's time. It's all blown off. Looks pretty good. I thought about doing a resin pour on this, but I think I'll do that in an upcoming video on a different a couple signs. So I'm going to burn it with a torch and shellac it, and we'll be good to go.
Okay, the first thing I'd like to talk about in Carb Co Maker, I've got a 90 day subscription free when I bought this CNC, or I got this CNC from Same Smart. It was sent out to me uh, free of charge to review. I did not pay for it, but it comes with a 90 day subscription to Carb Co Maker. And I've been, I don't know much about Carb Co Maker, and I've been watching many videos by many great uh, content creators on YouTube on how to do this and do that. And first off, I took some pine that came from your big box store, and I printed out this simple little 3D HP raised letters. And as you can see here, I'll show you a close-up picture, it uh, broke off part of the P. And that didn't come out quite how I wanted. But this is an experiment. It's a learning process. I know a lot about a lot of things, but I don't know much about CNC's, but I am learning. And if you've seen in some prior videos that I did a long time ago, I used to have an MP CNC, which means mostly printed CNC. It had a footprint of three foot by three foot and like four or five inches tall, and I had my Makita router on that. And I, oh, I don't know, a year and a half or so ago, may, maybe a year ago, I made probably 10 or 20 signs with it. I used Easel as my software of choice. I had a subscription to Easel, and I done a lot of um, V-bit carving engravings of different signs for family and friends that you've seen in prior videos. And then I done a resin inlay. I poured, mixed up some colored resin. I poured it in. I kept it below the top so I wouldn't have to resurface them on my MVCNC. Well, with this CNC, I'm going to be doing a lot of resin pours, and I will be surfacing them, and they're going to look amazing. I've seen so much cool work online that different uh, creators have done that I would like to also learn how to do that also. But anyway, moving on from this little block, I repeated it. I got a bigger piece of pine. And like I say, pictures here on the screen, and I've done some more raised letters. I think, I'm not sure, if I'm probably going to stain this. I'll probably stain it and seal it. And if I do seal it, it's fast and easy. I buy a bullseye shellac. It works really good. I just sprays on, works great. I stain everything by hand, paint it on with a brush, apply with a rag, wipe off the excess, wait for it to completely dry, and then go over with shellac would be how I finish this. But 3D HP, as you know, stands for 3D Hobby Projects which kind of covers a little bit of everything that I do. And moving on to this one. Now this is, my, this is my first carve that I've ever actually done on a CNC. And yes, I had trouble as you've seen in the video. Uh, the bit that I used on it, let's see, what was the bit I used on it? Got it right here somewhere. It was a Speed Tiger ball nose end mill. I'm looking at my paper here, tapered end mill and I burned up the tip. Now, like a dummy, I didn't have a clearing pass. In Carveco Maker, I had one, one pass with this bit to do the whole job. It started in the middle and I done a spiral. And it worked its way out. Then it got, oh, maybe, I don't know, a little over halfway, and then I started, it worked like an upcut, I started seeing a lot of spalling, a lot of material sticking straight up in the air. I kept running the job. I would randomly come out in the garage to check on my work. Now, when I'm in the house at my other computer, I have a PC out here in the garage, in my shop, that I pull up StreamYard, I set up a camera looking at my job. So when I'm in the house on my other computer, on one of my monitors, I can monitor the job, because you never ever want to leave CNC work or any kind of machinery running on its own unattended. And we'll get to why here in just a minute. Well, anyway, I started this job at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, something like that. And I figured, okay, it'll be done by bedtime, which is, you know, 10, 11 o'clock. No, it wasn't. <laughs> 4.30 a.m. in the morning the next morning. I had to stay up all night. I was exhausted. I didn't want to pause the job in Universal GCO Center, UGS. I didn't want to pause it because I didn't know it could start back up. I haven't experimented with that, but I know some people out there will pause jobs overnight to come back, hit resume the next day. I'm not sure what would happen, so I didn't want to try it since I had already invested so many hours working on this. So I stayed up and I waited for it to finish. I'd randomly come in the garage, vacuum up the mess, which was everywhere since I didn't have a dust boot on at that time. And guess what happened? It was getting down to the last 20 minutes, starting to do the perimeter. And the program had an error. I didn't touch anything. Universal G Code Center had an error and it stopped. Now, since the bit, since the Makita is turned on manually, it's sitting there running in the wood. It's just sitting there burning away. Now, there's the number one reason right there you don't want to leave things unattended. If I would have left it unattended, I'm sure at some point it would have got hot enough that it might have started a campfire. I had a little fire and then, you know, could have turned into a problem. So, my bit was in the material going around the perimeter 
and job shut down so I seen it came out shut off the router went to bed next morning when I woke up I vacuumed up the whole mess and I took it off it had still had the frame around at the wood and since I didn't have a what do you call these things a scroll saw available I got on Amazon I bought a little WEN w -E -N, scroll saw and I finished cutting this out and I sanded the edge a little bit it's not perfect I'm gonna stain this and finish it but I still have a little bit of work to do around some of these uh, stars here for the stars and stripes and I've got a little pick set so I got onto Amazon and I bought this little set right here link in the description um, all these little brushes and picks that are perfect for uh, working with stuff like that and then I noticed that another content creator, I forget his channel's name, he does a lot of videos about Carbco Maker, was using a little blue wheel similar to this. So I put this on my drill, and I was able to get them most of the nooks and crannies and clean a lot of this up. Places where I couldn't get in, I'm going over with a wire brush, and I still have some more work to do on this before I can stain it. But basically, I went to the big box store, bought some pine. I think they're like six and a half, seven inches wide, eight foot long. I cut them down on my chop saw, and then I glue them together. I use a tight bond wood glue, and I glue them together, clamp them really good. Once they're dry the next day, I'll scrape off the excess, sand them if I need to before I put them in my CNC. And I made a waste board for my CNC. Well, actually, it comes with a waste board. As you've seen where it has all the holes in it so you can put clamps that is supplied with it. I chose not to use those so I had some half inch MDF. I used a blue tape method. I blue taped it on both sides with super glue activator and that is my waste board. Uh, there's no reason for me to damage the one that comes with the machine when I can put a thin piece of material on top of it which will work perfect. So that's what I'm using for a waste board. So all my future work I simply tape it down for now anyway, I don't know if I'll ever go with clamps again, but I use a blue tape method and tape everything down. But as far as for this sign, it came out good. This is very amateurish of me to have done this. I'm learning. I knew I needed the clearing bit, but I figured what the hell, maybe that small, that small ball nose, which I burned the tip up on and it's basically worthless now. These are only, this particular one's like 15 bucks on Amazon. So I ordered another one at the tip. I'll try to get a picture here on the screen, but you can see that the tip has burnt on the end. It's a kind of a dark brown in color, and I burnt the tip, so this is basically a dead bit. So I have to learn my feeds and speeds. And as far as for the speed on the Makita router, when I turned it on, I kind of went by ear. You know, I've used a lot of power tools my whole life, and I kind of went by ear with how fast I should run it. Whether that will work for me in the future or not, time will tell, but I kind of went with, you know, um, you know, hearing it, how it was running. I need to, uh, it's got like one to five power settings and they're like 10,000 up to 30,000 RPM. I'll just have to fine tune that, do some more work to get that right. But moving on, after I've done this, I was going to design a sign in Carbco Maker and yeah, I was kind of being a pain in the butt and I couldn't get it quite figured out. So I got a free subscription, 30 days diesel. <coughs> That I used to subscribe to. Now, the easel used to be $20 a month, and for some unknown reason, I guess they decided they needed to charge $24.99 a month and jack it up five a month. So, like a year, year and a half ago, I dropped it because I wasn't using it that often. Now I've got another 30 day trial, and it's very simple and easy to design stuff in easel. But if you're simple minded or not even simple minded, if somebody doesn't quite understand, and it makes it a lot simpler to use an easel, put it that way. There's a lot of things you might want to design. It's very easy to understand easel and do a lot of things, and it will do 3D carvings. So I just made a simple sign. Once again, I took pine, glued it together, and clamped it. And it says hourly rate, $50 per hour. Okay, since the pandemic, I used to do side work for $25 an hour. Well, now I charge $50 an hour if I choose to do side work. If you watch me, it's $75 an hour. If you help, it's $100 an hour. If you try to do it, First, and cutting this 150 an hour means you probably really screwed it up and it's going to be a lot more work. Home and auto repair. So I've seen signs like this all over the internet. I changed it up and put home and auto repair. And I just noticed that I misaligned a couple things here. Everything is in line until you get down to here and then if you help, if you tried, first contact. I should have bumped those three lines over one notch. Boo boo on my part. But this pine I had spray painted black before I engraved it and I wasn't sure if I was going to seal it, resin port or what I was going to do but as you see here in the clip I took a torch and I just torched it up a little bit 
and then I sprayed it again with uh, bullseye shellac. I went over with a couple of coats, looks pretty good, and I'll hang that up in here somewhere. But yeah, it looks pretty cool. And you know, that's some of the things that I've done on it. Now, when I first got this uh, from Sang Smart, I wanted an adapter for my Nikita, and they were currently out of stock, but the person I was speaking with online told me that in a week or so they would have it in. Well, a week passed, they were gonna ship it, and then it went out of stock again. I looked on Amazon, the mount for the Makita 65mm was still out of stock, but they had the 69mm, if you have a DeWalt or something that takes a 69mm um, router, they had that in stock, so I went ahead and ordered that mount, the company reimbursed me for the price of it, it's like $29, and Dave Gat and CNC, which I love his channel, um, I watch him quite often, he had, run, he had, had a adapter that he had made, and I don't know, Tinkercad or uh, something uh, that went from 69 millimeter down to 65. So rather than me designing my own little round mount, that 69 millimeters of outside, 65 millimeters of inside, I downloaded it from Dave Gatton's site, printed it out on my 3D printer in ABS. I have it on there now, the Makita's mounted, looks really good. And then I went to Harbor Freight and I bought their dust extractor. And it's loud, but it doesn't scream. It's, it hums very loud. It doesn't scream like a shop back that's ba basically deafening and hurts your ears. And I'm, temporarily, I've got a copper pipe up here with a piece, a piece of wire to hold the hose up out of the way. The dust boot, I was looking on, and I'm, once again, here's some pictures of the dust boot. The dust boot, I had seen one on Etsy, looked really cool. They wanted like $55 for it, printed out and shipped. I looked around on some different websites, which I'll have the link to that below in the description, and I found one on, I think it was Thingiverse, that looked exactly, and it was the exact style that I wanted. It takes magnets to hold the bottom on. So I printed that, I glued in the hot, I hot glued in the brush down below, I trimmed down the br bristles because they were way too long on what I currently had, and the magnets weren't strong enough. The dust boot wouldn't stay on. So I went on Amazon, and I wrote down the word, I can't pronounce them, neodymium, neodymium <laughs> magnets. I bought some different ones because I was thinking, okay, the ones I bought were the wrong magnets, they weren't strong enough. Well, when I put the new ones on, yeah, I grabbed more, but the dust boot was kind of falling off. So I done what a lot of people might do, and I grabbed some duct tape. And I put duct tape on it, all the way around, four little pieces of duct tape, worked perfect. I ran the job as you've seen here when I done this sign right here and uh, no dust, nothing anywhere, it all went in the shop back, the side, you know, went into the big bag over here in the Harbor Freight, dust extractor, not the shop back, worked really good, so that was pretty cool. This table that I had built for my MPC and C when I had it on there, I put the emergency stop in the front. Now that's a bad idea, there has been quite a few times in the past where they'll have the thing running and I come up to look at something, I hit the emergency stop, I kill the job. So don't have your emergency stop button in the front because you'll, you'll, you might bump into it. And if you're overweight like I am, well, you never know. You might hit it with your stomach or something. So it's best not to have that in the front. But other than that, the machine has been working awesome, been working really good. I have not used their, uh, um, what do you call this little doohickey in the back? Can't think of the name of it. I'll put it on the screen. Anyway, I've been I've been homing to the front left corner of my work or in the center. I do the paper method. I bring it down really close, get it centered where I want it, and uh, then I start my job from there. That's been working really well. Now, if you have a wireless mouse on a PC or something that's close to your machine or where you're working in your garage or shop, I will go over there to the screen. I'll put my pointer on whatever I want to click on. I walk over here with a wireless mouse and I click it and then I can fine tune and adjust whichever direction I want. And then I go back over there and I click the next one and then I, you know, the move the gantry uh, forward, back, up or down and get that all set up. And that's been working out real well for me. You know, I really don't know what else to say, but yeah, I'm having fun with it. Oh yeah. Dust extractor. Tom Lama makes over on Printables had this big old dust extractor that he had a printed had a design. He's been using it. It's like version 2. This came out really cool. And yeah, it's multicolored. I printed it out in Prusa Mint Orange and some Ziltec Yellow. I've got it all glued together. 
and my hypercube which is 400 by 400 by 500 is large enough to print these larger rings but it ain't printing so good right now I've got to tweak it so I cut the bigger pieces in half the, the yellow pieces are all cut in half and glued back together with CA glue and activator and uh, yeah it's coming out pretty good hello can you hear me <laughs> but uh, yeah well, the, what this will end up being if you don't if, for those that don't know this will end up getting mounted on a trash can or something at some point Everything from the shop back will be sucked in through here. It swirls around all your sawdust and debris, your chips fall down in the barrel below. All the fresh air goes up through the filter and hopefully the dust extractor bag will stay empty and all your debris will wind up in the trash can below. It will keep your filter much cleaner. And it has a paper bag filter, a cloth bag filter that may end up, not sure, it might end up being a great big put a great big regular fit of filter on it like a 0 0.05 micron or whatever they are or I might just leave the bag on it and use a cyclone so this will be coming up in an upcoming coming video and project not sure when that will be but currently I need to seal this up better all the joints that I use CA glue I need to seal it and then paint it and make it all one color so it's not all funky looking and then uh, you know seal it real good with a flex seal or something I don't know just need to seal it up so it's airtight everywhere but yeah, that's pretty cool, and I'll have a link down below if you're interested in where you can find this at. There's a very good chance that here soon I will be, uh, Same Smart May probably will be sending me out the rotary that they came out with, and I'll be having some videos I'll be doing on that, working with the rotary access. And I'm not sure what I'll make, a lightsaber or something, I don't know. But that'll be pretty cool, so uh, please like, subscribe, share, do all that stuff that you normally do. I'm trying to grow my channel, and with your help, I can do that. And I really appreciate you watching today. Yes, I'm a complete noob at CNC. Yes, I've done a bunch of signs in the past, but my actual first 3D card, I will have to say, is right here. That will probably be my actual first 3D card. I'm all just working with letters, and I just gotta practice makes perfect. Like with anything you do in life, practice makes perfect. So. You're watching this video today. I'm not an expert. If you're a pro at doing this, you probably haven't learned nothing from me talking today. But if you're a newbie like me at CNC, you might like what I have to say, what I'm doing. You know, my background is in construction. I've done many things in my life, but I haven't worked much with a CNC at all. So I'm learning, and I'll have many more videos out there to watch. So please like, subscribe, share, you know, like I said before. So everybody have an awesome day, and I'll uh, talk to you later. And happy seeing seeing, I guess, is what what you'd say, right? Later, guys. Bye.